Hey everybody, this is Dylan. I'm here with Dr. Jen Hawk and Dr. Doug Lyle. You know Dr. Lyle very well because I talk about him all the time, but now we have a new Evo Psych Master uh, to, master. Join the, <laughs> <laughs> to join the realm. So, Dr. Jen Hawk, so happy to have you on the channel for the first oh, time. Awesome. Very excited, very to, excited to, to, be to learn here. all about what, what you're doing. I wanted to start with a little bit about the ego trap, pleasure trap, and how the pleasure mm -hmm. trap can lead you into the ego trap. Uh, you can. You don't have to go. You don't have to do the long version if you don't want. But it's such an important one. <laughs> Is that one your that way I of just... telling him to keep it short? <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess. I guess it sounded like that. <laughs> Be totally fair. Yeah. So yeah, it, give us a little introduction to the pleasure trap and how. I think a lot of people on my channel understand some of the nuances of the pleasure trap because mm -hmm. I push them toward your book all the time. Mm -hmm. But the ego trap is one that's not as talked about lately, mm -hmm. and we're still waiting for your book, by the way. Right. Sir. It's actually our book. Oh, She's excellent. my co-author. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. I'm happy yeah. to hear that. Very good. So, Jen, go ahead. Yeah. So, since, you're, since your viewers are pretty familiar with the pleasure trap already, we won't necessarily do a big overview, but just the, the very brief essence of the pleasure trap, in case you're stumbling across this video with no background whatsoever, is that we have not adapted as human beings to deal with the modern food environment. This is, this is a new problem of abundance that is facing us in the modern food environment, and we are adapted for scarcity. What killed most of our ancestors was starvation, and so we adapted in a situation that that rewarded our ability to seek out and slurp up the richest food that we could locate. And now there's just way too much of it. So almost everybody to some degree is stuck in this dynamic, which we call the pleasure trap. This, this term was coined by Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer in their, in their book. Um, so people are stuck in the pleasure trap. They're trying to do something about it. They want to change their lives. They want to lose weight. They want to get healthy. Um, and so very often they will go to great extremes to do that. They will really try to do it right. They will set the goal very high to try to try to meet this goal that they set for themselves. And they will, in that process, unwittingly put themselves into what we call the ego trap, which is a very tricky little situation that has to do with your status and how you are, you are perceiving your relative status in the so-called Stone Age village that we all live in. So essentially, if you set the bar too high for the goals that you're trying to accomplish for yourself and you stumble a little bit, as people almost always will, if you, are, if you set them too high, you have a tendency where it actually makes more sense psychologically to self-sabotage, to kick over the whole table, rather than risk showing other people that you did your best and you still failed. So that's, that's a version of what we're calling the ego trap, which is a situation where other people think that you're capable of doing something that you're not so sure that you're actually capable of doing. So these two things are like a, they're like a seesaw. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So what's an like a example of how this can happen as it relates to diet, food, health? Yeah. You know, telling someone it's really easy to do this. Just, sure. You know. Well, that's one way that people can get into it. So, so people will get, start off with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of motivation, and um, they will either tell themselves or, or tell other people, oh, this is no problem. I've totally got this. And then they get into it, and their motivation is dynamic, and it's dwindling over time. And then they're, they're finding that they're, they're not attending to the actual process. They're a little too focused on the outcome. So this is the whole... The whole project here is about reorienting your attention to the, that feedback you're desperately craving about other people, about how valuable you are when you meet your goals, to actually focusing on what it feels like internally to be in a process that is moving you toward the goals you want to accomplish. And that's actually what is going to build your self-esteem over time. Mm -hmm. Talk, yeah. That's a great point, process versus outcome. A lot yeah. of people, you know, they might get into this at first because they just want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. They just want to get to the very end of health and, mm -hmm. and they forget about what really is going to give you sort of self-esteem mm -hmm. and, and feel good and feel like you're getting it done even though you might not be there yet. Mm -hmm. Can you address that process, can, outcome can sort of dynamic? can let Doug jump in there because he's, sure. he's the so important. Yes. guru on this. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's the most important idea for human happiness, actually. Yeah, the um, people will think that they're only going to feel better when they've actually got better feedback from other people. Mm -hmm. So they're, they know that th there's no talking people out of that truth in, in the sense that when you do achieve a goal that is significant that the world can see, so you lose a lot of weight or you get a degree or you have financial success, you get a promotion, um, all, uh, anything that is a success marker that people can observe 
will cause other people to say, wow, that's impressive. And that and it feed, feels really good. It feels really good. That's you're, you're built to, to be attuned to that because you're, that's, our design is to be essentially trying to contribute and display our wares to the village. Mm -hmm. And when they notice and they're, they're impressed or they, they respect what we've accomplished, then it feels good. The, um, and so we know that. And that those feelings are uh, very potent. In other words, that's the that's the most potent feeling system probably that there is in humans. Good drugs. Yes, that's intense <laughs> drugs. Whereas the what we talk about or what we describe as self esteem is your you have an internal monitoring system that we we have termed the internal audience. It goes by many names in the history of psychology and philosophy. It's called been called superego, it's been called consciousness, it's been called self-consciousness, it's been called the internal critic by cognitive therapy. We call it the internal audience and we think that that's the best description that, that there's been. And uh, it's because it's essentially, uh, Rodney Dangerfield called it the committee. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's not like this is a new idea, it's just, just that we now are placing this in a context where it really makes sense to our natural design. The internal audience is there as essentially a coaching feedback process for when we're doing things that the other world isn't watching us do. So if you're a carver or you're a painter and you're working very hard on the painting and you're, you see that you're, you're doing an excellent job relative to your abilities, your, your internal audience is watching your effort. And as it watches your excellent effort, it's praising you on your effort. It's essentially, it's truly a moral feedback system. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's saying, well done, you know, it may be slightly disappointed that you're not as good a painter as we thought you were. And, and this, is a, this is what goes on with, um, uh, what will happen, what the ego trap is, is that when we're not sure that our abilities are gonna meet the standards of the internal audience, that's when we shy away and quit. That's an internal ego trap. So there's yes. external ego traps and internal ego traps. And people with the pleasure trap can get themselves into either one. Whether yes. the, the actual people around them are thinking like, what's the problem? You were doing such a good job for a while, and so why isn't it working anymore? But also this internal process where you are no longer doing these little fundamentals and giving this internal committee the evidence that it needs. I call it sometimes an, an auditor. Like it's a it's like a little committee of auditors that's coming along to to look at your work and to mm -hmm. see how you've if you've been doing the small things that you need to do to accomplish your goals. So how does that put you in the ego trap, the internal version? The internal version is um, your the the internal audience essentially picks up cues from the world about what it thinks is reasonable. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's because it's meant to be a facsimile of real life people. That's the point of it. Yeah. Okay. And so let's suppose, for example, that a person is very bright, capable, and conscientious, but they've got an alcohol problem. Mm -hmm. Their family and friends say, "Just put down the bottle. Just do it. What's the so problem? Just it's essentially come on. Let's just snap your fingers. You're too competent. Let's just do this. You're too or, smart to have this problem. Yeah. Or if you've got a weight problem and you're smart and conscientious and you have a weight problem, the world says." why don't you just push yourself away from the table? What's the problem? And so you're too smart and competent to have this problem. And so as a result, what's gonna happen is, is that those messages, which are very reasonable from their social environment, get migrated and become the, the, the material that the internal audience is believing. Mm -hmm. So the internal audience also says, why don't you just put down the bottle? Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that, the internal audience is literally not you. It's, a, it's essentially outside of who it is that you are. It's a different psychological entity. Yeah. That's why we hear people talk in this strange way. They'll say, I'm so I'm mad at so myself. I'm so mad at myself. I'm so disgusted with right. myself. I just can't live with myself anymore. These are all little internal audience You're watching the fact that there's two beings mm -hmm. inside the same system. Mm -hmm. One of them is the one that's commenting and observing. You see? The other one is you. Mm -hmm. So this is what I call the self. The self actually has to do the work and actually has to deal with the expectation pressure. The internal audience doesn't have any expectation pressure. They're not even you. No. Nope. They're just watching you. you. Okay? okay? And so the thing is is that the internal audience, if they set the bar too high, like, well, you're supposed to do this diet perfectly and be no 
the SOS free and do this every day and exercise every day and get all this done and therefore you're going to lose you know 38 pounds in the next 38 weeks. You're going to have these huge goals and get all this external praise and that, that's going to change your life. Right. So the person's imagination is seeing what it's going to be like at the end of the journey. And that's actually what's motivating them. That's the okay? wrong way to do it. It's actually incredibly reasonable that that's why they would even be motivated. Sure. It's because they're seeking the esteem from the village. But what happens then is the internal audience very often then has a very high standard because they say, oh, well, now I've learned what I'm supposed to do. This is what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this would be reasonable if, if we were trying to learn how to play the piano well and you needed to practice for half an hour a day. That's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the problem is, uh, uh, imagine if you, you practiced half an hour a day and it caused you physical pain. Mm -hmm. Every time your keys worked a, a thing, it hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Imagine you're trying to learn how to ride a bicycle and every time you fall over, you have an orgasm. It's my favorite example. It's okay? so good. It's like You'd this, have some problems learning to do that. <laughs> yes. So in other words, what, what we're trying to do with the pleasure trap is you're trying to go against instincts, mm -hmm. to go against what actually feels good. And to do that, in other words, this is not normal learning process. It's not normal goal seeking process. It's not. This is, of course, it's got a normal goal that we want more esteem. But the project that we have to get there winds up being much more difficult than we understand intuitively. And as a result of that, the internal audience, the world doesn't understand the pleasure trap. The world doesn't understand how difficult it is. So the internal audience doesn't understand how mm -hmm. difficult it is. And so the internal audience very often then has a standard or an expectation for the self's behavior mm -hmm. that is above what the self is really going to be able to pull off. Mm -hmm. And so when the self starts to stumble behind normal human instinctual weaknesses around the enticements of the world. When it doesn't, when it's not perfect and it starts to wobble, the, the internal audience looks at it and is disgusted mm -hmm. and gives them negative feedback and it feels bad, okay? And this is now people start thinking that this is something that we need to exercise. We need to, you know, this is some trauma that is driving this. this or is bad self-talk, that we need to rewrite our self-talk. Right. but. This is right. This is not what it really is when we really look at it. It's the internal audience has accidentally, because of a novel problem called the pleasure trap, it is set the bar too high. Mm -hmm. Okay? And now the self is in the ego trap where the right move, when we can't live up to the expectations of others, the right thing to do is to not try. Mm -hmm. That's what every kid does. Anybody that ever won an Oscar at age 12, you know, mm -hmm. is pretty soon finding out that the best thing to do is to go into directing or something else because you're never going to have, never going to be able to live it up to these expectations. And so that pressure, that's that awful feeling of knowing that you are, you've quit. Mm -hmm. So this is um, a lady yesterday here at this conference, uh, somebody asked us, um, don't I have fear of failure? Mm -hmm. Or no, don't I have fear of success? Her or you no, no. There's a lady. Generally. No, there's a lady in the conference that, that, that gave us a that her fear of success is what's stopping her. That her fear of success being... is what's oh, stopping her. Yeah, I was in the room for that. It's a very interesting mistake. Mm -hmm. It's not a fear of success that's stopping you. Mm -hmm. It's a fear of failure. Mm -hmm. It is that the ego trap is you're we're intimidated by the expectations of either of others or of the internal audience, mm -hmm. and those things cause us to realize that if we do our best we may very likely fall short of those expectations. Mm -hmm. So the right thing to do is to quit. Mm -hmm. So this is, this, is, this is why the pleasure trap and the ego trap, I call them you know, like a, a Chinese finger trap. Like you put your fingers in, and I did this as a kid, or we got mm -hmm. them in, when we visited Mexico, they had them down there too. And you put your finger in each end, and when you try to pull your fingers out, they trap you. Yeah. Okay. This is very much what this is like. Working at odds. Right. You're, you're, if you try to, if you set the bar, the, the, the best way out of the pleasure trap is perfection. Mm -hmm. That way we will go through the neuroadaptation, we will get to the end of the line, now whole natural food tastes great, everything's beautiful, right? And yeah, except, way into the ego trap mm -hmm. Right is into the ego <laughs> trap. And what happens is that a lot of people who are coming across this information who sort of start once and they feel like they can do it and they're interested in the plant-based world and they, they have the conscientiousness to do perfection for a yes, while right. and they see that it is the way out of the pleasure trap mm. and so they have this sort of 
uh, bad information about how easy it is that's being part of the internal audience feedback that they're getting because they're like, I, I should be able to do this. Because it's I just, have. I have, and, and they know what a difference it makes, and they know so that they can So what went wrong there? That's such an awesome example. I yeah. haven't thought of that. So what happened, and how do you change that for that example? Yeah, well, just like he's saying, that they're they're focused in with the external feedback. They're trying to meet an ex. They're trying to meet a big goal that has some big outcome that is whether it's conscious or not linked to the potential external esteem that they're going to get from other people. You want to do a really perfect job with the pleasure trap and lose a bunch of weight really fast because then you'll look really good and then you're getting better feedback from the village. That's really what's going on. So in really, it was minds. that first super conscious or the you know, the perfectionist yeah. part that they did. They shouldn't have. Yeah. Is it that they just they could have done the perfectionism it. anyway? Some people but can. It's that they should have almost expected it to they, become more yes. challenging and then modified and focus more and on the process than the outcome. Yes, it's, it's process over outcome from the beginning. So people get very excited. They feel a lot of motivation when they see a lot of weight coming off very quickly, especially and and. But they're not they're not learning that really the joy and the the sustainable. Um, pleasant feedback that you're going to get is from this internal audience saying you're doing a really good job with the basics. Like it's not, it's not very showy. It's not very, it's not as impressive as when someone at work says you, you look really good. It's a different feeling. It's much more subtle. Um, but that's what needs to be there from the beginning for people to really understand the difference here.